Hello everyone, this is Apollo from the Mobile Development Club at the University of Washington. So last class we talked about how you can use VStack to lay out elements together on a vertical line. However, I didn't really go to much details about them, and I didn't show you how maybe you want to align them horizontally together, or maybe one element floating in front of each other. So that will be the topic for today. And also, maybe you have heard of the news that Apple this year, their developer conference is going to be on June 22nd. And there's a new Swift student challenge, which they used to call it like WDC scholarship. So basically, you will need to write a Swift playground for this purpose. And you'll show them how you maybe know some iOS development and your creativity. So today, we're going to show you how you can use Swift UI in Swift playgrounds, maybe because you want to use it for this challenge. Or maybe because you don't have an Xcode and you don't have a Mac to run Xcode on. So, so Playgrounds will be our friend. Also, Playgrounds is available on Macs, so we're going to use that. It makes it easier for me to record. So let's get started by using a blank template. All right. So First, since we're doing SwiftUI, we should always import SwiftUI, telling it that we are using the SwiftUI. And if you remember from last class, that we have a struct, and it's the name of our view. So maybe let's name it um, demo stack view. And we say it's a SwiftUI view. So we do this. So now we know that demo stack view is off view. And now Swift Playground is not very happy because we didn't implement and say what our body is going to be like. So we are going to add it. Let's say var body is some kind of view. And we do that. So we're going to use a rectangle for our view. So rectangle. As you can see here, autocomplete, we get a rectangle. And remember, we don't just want the name rectangle there. We want the actual rectangle, so add the parentheses. So now your Swift Playground should be happy that we have a view that just shows a rectangle. So if you type foreground color, it's going to allow you to assign a color to a rectangle. And let's go with um, blue. If you see there, I type in dot. The auto complete says I can type blue. So that's our demo stack view. If you try to run your code now, it works, but you can't see anything. Unlike Xcode, where you have a preview here at the bottom, and you have a canvas to display what's it going to look like. So what we do inside Swift Playgrounds is that you import Playground support. That will tell us that we have some functionality that's specific to Playground. And we're going to say Playground page. You see auto-compete at the bottom. Current. Press Enter to use that auto-compete. Dot live view. And that equals to or assigns to be a UI hosting controller. And for that UI hosting controller, we want it to display our root view, which is demo stack view. We don't just want the name, we want an actual demo stack view. So add the parentheses here. And if you run your code now, you see on the right hand side, we get a preview for our demo stack view that's just a rectangle that's blue. And if you change the color to pink and run your code again, you say it turns pink. Oh, that's a, such a bright color there. All right. So in last class, we remember that if you want to put like maybe two rectangles together, and maybe this one, I'm going to make it green dot. Once you type in dot, maybe type a color green. That works. Now Swift Playgrounds is again also not happy because you should only return a single view from the body. In last class, we learned that we can use VStack. Use VStack to arrange these two together. And an interesting feature inside Swift Playgrounds is that you can hover on it and drag to include our rectangles inside. So now whichever things that's inside this braces is going to be inside that VStack. Now, if you run your code again, you're going to see that on the upper half is going to be our pink rectangle, and the lower half is our green rectangle. Now, that's great. So how about what if we want to align them horizontally together? 
So if you remember, vStack stands for vertical stack. If we want them to be horizontally together, we change to H, which stands for horizontal stack. And if, if you run your code again, woohoo, they are now horizontally together online. The question would naturally be is, can you embed an H stack inside a V stack? And the answer is yes. So maybe for vStack, let's first put this inside here, and we add another rectangle. There you're gonna see on the right, if you run the code. The lower bottom half is gonna be this black color, and the upper half is gonna be our H stack there. So that's nice. And again, you can have another rectangle here because we're, we're inside of this stack, this one is going to be vertically with them. And let's give it a foreground color. What color do we want? Mm, maybe purple. Purple is fancy. And if you run your code again, nice. Now we have this purple rectangle at the bottom. So now we have seen that you can have H stack inside V stack. So you can do vice versa, V stack inside H stack. Everything inside an H stack is going to be horizontally aligned together. Everything inside a V stack is going to be vertically aligned together. So how about if you want something to float in front of them? For example, here on the right, those colors are quite bright and I can't really take it. So I want to add maybe a little white shadow on top of them so it doesn't look as bright. So it's called a Z stack because uh, what we call like things floating on top of each other in computer science is using Z index in addition to X and Y. So this stack is describing like how close to you on the screen it is and how maybe far back in the screen. And just like previously, you can drag this to include the entire V stack inside. And let's add another rectangle and of white color, foreground color, white. And now if you run it, you're just going to see this white rectangle because it's on top of everything now. So you can't really see anything in the back. So what I remember correctly is that we have this opacity modifier. Remember this dot opacity, dot foreground color, just modifiers, modifying the view rectangle to give us a little customization there. Maybe let's say 0 0.7, let's give it a try. So now you can see through and the background colors are not as popping out as they used to be. So now this stack is great, it allows you to align stuff in front of each other. And maybe we can even use another, um, how about we stack here? It allows us to use two rectangles. Mm -hmm. Maybe the upper half I want to be white shadowed. Color the lower half will be black. And if you run our code, we're gonna see. Okay, that bottom half doesn't really do anything, but. Okay, maybe the opacity is too low. Oh, now you see the lower half is dimmed. And all right, so basically that's how you would use a stack view. So if you want to align something horizontally together, you will be using H stack. And if you want to do something to be vertically together, use V stack. And if you want the views to be like in front of each other, you will use the stack. I think that's it for today's lecture. And this is how you would use SwiftUI inside a playground. So for more, please check out uwapp.dev. But uh, wait, wait, wait. Since we are using stacks, why don't display like for more, please visit uwapp.dev on our screen. So I like the upper half here. So maybe I just display like our text. Remember last class we used text to display some text. Te those contents should be inside quotation marks. 
For more, please visit uwapp.dev. And if we refresh, hmm, doesn't do quite what we want to do here because this text, if I add a foreground color to be white, you will see that the text is going to be white and it appears in here. But I want it to be upper here with this white background, so I'll need to put them in another Z stack here. So it flows in front of that. Oh, that's too much. All right, there we go. So now if we run our code again, so this is the difference. You do need to run your code again and again. And I don't want the foreground color to be white. Maybe I want a larger font size. Font. Font. It says it's font. And we want the large title kind of font. So if you run again, you'll see it becomes larger and become black again because I changed the foreground color back. But now um, I really want this UW app.dev to you know have a bold font size. I could go ahead and maybe use like a um, formatted string. But what I just do here is use another text and apply a modifier to modify the font weight, which changes how heavy it is. And we're going to say bold. So now because we are inside this Z stack, they will be in front of each other. And I also need to change the font for this as well to be a large title. And you see again, they're still in front of each other because we're inside this stack. If we want them to be horizontally together, we'll embed them inside an H stack. And drag it to here. And if we run again, it shows what we want here. For more, please visit uwapp.dev. So that is pretty much our class for today or section for today. I strongly recommend you to check out how you can maybe arrange and compose this H stack, horizontal stack, base stack, vertical stack, and Z stack floating in front of each other kind of stack and see what kind of effect you can create. And again, for more, please visit uwapp.dev.